All right, chat room. Have you guys seen any of this? What's up with these old people on Twitter yelling about Virtua Fighter? All I see on my Twitter timeline is, you fucking kids want this rollback. Fuck you guys. You guys don't even like Virtua Fighter. Go eat a dick. And I'm like, Jesus, you old people are violent. Everybody's so grumpy. I don't understand the issue. I saw a ton of tweets on my timeline that were like, you know what? Why does it matter? None of you kids like Virtua Fighter anyway. None of you guys are Virtua Fighter players. I don't care what kind of net code it has. I hope you guys don't play it. This community is going to be sick anyway. There's a lot of people really mad. I think Obama had the exact same thought I had. It's mad weird, now a common reoccurrence. We're seeing this a lot. For people to take valid criticism of a game's package as a personal attack on them or their community slash scene. How often have you heard, oh, that game doesn't have rollback, so I'm not interested in playing it, with the follow-up attack is always, yeah, well, my game's good and your game sucks. I don't, sorry, I don't want to play a shitty game because it has rollback. It's never seen as the game as a feature doesn't have rollback, which is something you want to play people online. They always go right to your scene sucks. Not enough people play your game. My game's just better. It's an actual good game. It's always an immediate shift, right? Because they're sensitive that instead of attacking the package of the game, you're attacking them or the gameplay itself or the scene behind the community. It's always a very personal feeling thing. It says VF in the West is mad small, always has been in my experience and memory. And no one gets anything out of, I think this is supposed to be shitting on them, right? That isn't the point. I saw a quote tweet on my timeline about how large content creators were shitting on VF and they did it to like get clicks and views and all that kind of stuff. I can't think of anything that I could do as a content creator that will give me less views than talking about Virtual Fighter. I haven't talked about Virtual Fighter. In fact, I'm not really interested in it. I, I It's not a franchise I am really that interested in. So I don't know whose content is being grumpy about it that's like a non-VF person but let's get into some of the uh the issues here a lot of the discourse i've seen on twitter has been people who like vf saying well vf is a good game none of you motherfuckers are going to play it anyway so why do you care if it has rollback or not a very weak argument and, and a very weird thing to say i think it should be easy to understand why i want rollback in that game because i want rollback in all games the more that games like the new guilty gear have rollback the new melty blood has a rollback the new KOF gets rollback. The more games have better packages, the more it becomes a standard to include it. I would like games to have better netcode. I would like games to have better lobby and connectivity. I would like games to have more consistent, better training modes that include frame data, like something that Guilty Gear Strive doesn't have, which is very frustrating. I would like games to have more complete and better feeling ranked modes. There's lots of features I would like all fighting games to have. You want VF to have rollback because you're like, sick, VF has rollback. That's another game out of Japan that has it. And it's just more proof that it should be the standard for everything. The second thing, part of that is, you're not interested in VF, you're not a VF player, why do you give a shit? How many people do you think were plus R players before plus R got relaunched with rollback? How many people do you think were Garo players or KOF 2002 players, or were even interested in some of the games that come out that have rollback in them? How many players do you think were plus R fans that were real hype about plus R before plus R came out with rollback? I play it every day. I had zero interest in Plus R before it got better netcode. Zero interest. No interest entirely. It's like the most streamed video game on my channel this year. This is a chance for a game to be reintroduced to a new audience. And for a lot of people, and the majority of people who play games, right? You guys all know this. It's been the last year and a half. We all experienced this. You and another opponent fighting against each other is the vast majority of a fighting game experience. And if that experience is good, because the online play is good, it's gonna be a big deal for a lot of people. If it's easy to get in and play people online, it's easier to justify spending time learning and getting interested in the game, its community, its scene, etc. Now that's not to say that if the gameplay of a game doesn't interest someone, they're going to play it all the time because you know it has rollback. Some of my favorite games have shitty online. That's just the reality of life. It doesn't mean that just because the game has good online, now suddenly I will pretend the gameplay doesn't exist and just to say, Yes, has rollback, must consume, play every day, me new favorite game. People play the games that have good netcode to try them and engage with them, but the games people play often and all the time are usually just going to be games they like, regardless of whatever the netcode situation is, yeah? I don't play Plus R every day on stream because it has good netcode, right? It has good netcode, which is one of the reasons that got me in. I play it because I like it a lot. 20 games I've tried, the games I play the most are the games I have the most fun with, which are Skullgirls, Power Rangers, Plus R. Those are the games I keep coming back to. The other games are fun and I enjoy trying them, but those are the games that I feel interested in investing the most time in of all the new games I've tried. Think about how much I like Uni, right? I streamed and played a shit ton of Uni. I streamed and played a shit ton of Granblue, right? 
I love Dragon Ball. It's one of the games that I watch the most. And I don't play it as much because the online is bad. I think that should be very e easy to understand. People who are VF fans, or even if they're not VF fans and they're interested in trying the game because it's free, they're totally allowed to play the game and enjoy it. I think you can appreciate that it is free to play for PS Plus, which is a huge deal, right? That is a W and a half right there. But also appreciate that in the same package that's free, which is a big W, the online play is going to be bad, which is a big L. I think it's okay to acknowledge that packages for fighting games have wins and losses. It's a product. I know that you love the scene and you love the game and you're hype about it. It's okay to be objective about the things that in its packaging, it does and does not do. I don't know if people understand this. If you don't live in a well-populated area, trying to play games with bad netcode online fucking sucks. People who are on the West Coast or people in New York telling you, guys, uh, people are blowing it up. They're playing the game every day. These people don't live in the same world you do. They have people around them to play. That's very different than someone who lives somewhere else in Southeast Asia or someone that lives in the middle of Europe or in the middle of the US or basically anywhere that's not a few places in the world. I live here and some of the games I like, it's still hard to find people playing. Anybody who's like, why are you guys just shitting on Virtual Fighter? Saying the game doesn't have rollback, so they're not interested in buying it is not shitting on VF. They're just saying what they require in a fighting game is good online play. It shouldn't be that complicated. You'll do yourself and your community a much bigger favor by accepting the people who don't want to play it for whatever reason they have and saying, hey, look, I get it. You don't want to play it. If you are interested in playing it, hell yeah, brother, come over here and play with me. This is the resources to check out. I'm streaming and I'll teach you the game. I'll help you out. If you're interested in VF, I got you. That will go a long, a long way. If you just take a second and think about it, it should be clear why people are not, are frustrated. I will watch the game too. I want you to know that. I don't, I don't care. I will watch whatever the next event is for the game. I'm, I'm interested enough to take a peek. I'm not even a big hater. Also on Twitter, you sound like real maroons, you old folks. You got to keep it together. You can't let these young kids break your ankles, right? Absorb netcode is, uh, is apparently sick. We'll, we'll know in a, give it a week. Until everybody knows exactly how it works, I have no opinion one way or the other on it. Everybody said that Street Fighter V's netcode was fixed on the last patch. Do you remember that? And I was like, guys, you can still see that there's one-sided rollback. You can see that there are the same issues from before. Perhaps it's not happening as much, but you can still see it. And then I just got banned from commentary for saying that. And then it turned out that it was correct. So, you know, I think it's better to wait a week so you let everybody else figure out whether it's good or bad and then say objectively true things. I'm not worried about the absorb thing because two things, right? One, who knows? And two, if it's the greatest thing ever, then fucking let's put absorb netcode and everything. You know what I mean? The thing is, though, that they were like, hey, we couldn't put rollback into our game, but we, you know, we're doing this absorb thing. Even they are just like, hey, you know, we did something. We got some absorb in there to make it a little less bad. I mean, that should tell you the whole story there, right? But I mean, you know, it's just funny to see the different reactions. It didn't look like a fun time from what I watched from some streams. Other streams, they seemed like they had a good time. So I don't know. People in California and New York are having a great time. So who cares about the people in Sweden, right? Get fucked. What do I think this means for the longevity of the game? I'm not sure. Like at worst for VF fans, this is just an upgraded version of their old game, yeah? So like, I think if you like Virtua Fighter, it probably is a prettier looking version of a game you already like, right? And certainly you'll pick up new players uh, that are interested in the game, which is cool. Like, is it gonna be a big boom? Probably not, right? But it's kind of hard to make that happen with the timing of it. And there are VF fans who are frustrated, of course, that the package isn't better. But at the same time, you know, that's just how it goes. Your delay is mine. No! How's it going? Have you guys seen everybody talk about uh, VF lately? <laughs> uh, you know, I just find it's funny because, you know, the first time someone played someone else far away from them and they saw tons of delay, what did they think? What did they think was happening every other time? Like you're playing people that are near you and the connections are great, or you're playing someone across the country and it's probably like anywhere from four to six frame delay or something, three to six frame probably delay. And you're like, this is great. Meanwhile, people, in every other part of the world that's not incredibly dense or like in the US are just, they're literally like, this is unplay, I cannot play this. Oh, this feels Jam so fan bad. I don't know what the fuck's happening. I played a guy from South America and I played like a PowerPoint presentation, apologize. You know, this is the thing about good on my end. 
and netcode in general. Like, you know, they just said, we've got this cool new absorb based solution. What does that mean? What's happening? What is the netcode doing? People have been theorizing. They've been in the lab, you know, like the, the stock photo of the guy like pouring the test tube in the lab where he's like staring at it. They've been like in the lab trying to figure out what the netcode does. And then they randomly discovered, I think Art found out that his connection connected to like a relay server for Google. And they were like, okay, there's a relay server maybe. And then everybody called the netcode racist. And then it turns out maybe the netcode's not that racist. So it's only a little racist. And it's just this whole hoopla of like everybody just freaking out about where are the towers? Where are the towers, Mason? Tell me where the towers are. Then you play against someone and what's happening? Like you play against someone and your inputs are all delayed. Okay. We could probably figure out what the netcode's doing. It just seems like delay-based netcode with a server that uh, can connect you to other people if you guys can't connect. That seems what it is. What the relay servers are supposed to do, the idea behind the servers, at least in terms of Street Fighter, from what we understand what they do, I don't know exactly how they work in VF, but I assume the intention is similar. Thinking about it like a relay is the way to think about it, right? In a peer-to-peer -peer game, you want to connect to your opponent because that's the fastest possible thing to do in terms of latency. The only reason you would want a server in between you and another person is if for some reason you do you two just can't connect to each other you're trading your ping for stability it's not rocket scientists right a rocket science <laughs> or a rocket scientist i saw the scrub quotes video everybody's been posting of hitting the button and there's like a massive amount of time before the attack comes out i mean everybody knows that it's delay right in the sense that when you play against someone else and they're very far away and you hit a button you can feel that there's a delay even before the game came out the influencers were like yeah i could feel the delay it seems pretty obvious one thing about vf that i think is interesting is that uh, it has like something that i think helps it maybe feel better which is the moves have such long startup right 12 frame startup with a big buffer window probably makes a game like that feel a little bit better uh, even in higher input delay. It doesn't, you get inputs eaten like crazy. The inputs aren't being eaten, they're being absorbed. I just, I don't understand why everybody's like, ah, oh, it's got, it's great. Apologize. <laughs> I don't think anybody would disagree with you if you say, hey, I live in X densely populated area with a large fighting game community. When I play against people online, you know, I have a lot of people in my area to play. So even if there's not rollback in delay, like, I can find enough good connections that I don't care. I don't think anybody's like, damn, fuck you, you piece of shit. They're like, oh, it must be nice. To me, it's the same thing as when Street Fighter fixed its netcode, right? It had the netcode fix that then everybody was like, this is, the netcode's working. It's funny, it's almost like it was the exact same person. The netcode is amazing, it's incredible, it's so good, it's got no issues now. And I'm just like, okay, let's wait a week and see. You wait a week and see and you're just like, mm, okay, well, Bruh. it's good on my end. Meanwhile, you know, I, the first night it was out, you could see one-sided rollback still, right? They're in the same region. My thought process now is I don't even say anything. I just wait. I just see how people's experience is because my experience is probably not enough. I live in California. I got it good. If I can play online, right, that is like the lowest possible bar. The point is like, how is it in the middle of the country? How is it for the middle of Europe, in Africa, in South America, in Western Asia, in the Philippines? The Philippines has lots of issues with so many games. They talk about it a lot. Yeah, the F there's a big FGC in uh, the Philippines. There's a big scene there. Anyway, this is to say that, you know, if somebody early before the game comes out tells you the netcode's good, especially when it's like, the netcode is a shadowy Illuminati member, the absorption-based net. That sounds like a fucking Akatsuki member's power. If I was told that the next member of the Akatsuki had absorption-based jutsu, I'd be like, oh shit. I can't wait to read that arc. If Code Mystics is porting some old game with rollback and people are like, it feels great, like you could probably believe them. But if it's some <laughs> absorption-based jutsu that you've never heard about, like it's okay to be cautious about it. Same thing with like KOF is gonna add rollback, right? They're like, oh yeah, we're, we're looking into making rollback happen. I think everybody is a little like, I'll see it when I believe it about KOF because even though they're adding rollback, which people want, they want to see that the implementation is good. I shouldn't give a shit, right? I live in SoCal. If a game has delay based netcode, I'm still going to be able to find enough motherfuckers. The connections are still going to suck because it's delay, but I could probably find enough people or go offline and play. But one of the biggest features about the FGC is that, you know, it is a worldwide uh, community, correct? People from all over the place play all kinds of games. The coolest thing about our experiences before 
is going offline and connecting everybody together to see that kind of competition and also to create those friendships and moments that matter between that kind of stuff, right? And so if half the people in the world, more than that probably, can't even play the game online and they're just pissed off, and there's just me living in SoCal like, this is great. Now that you can't play the game online, fly out to my event across the world and come to the place where you could play the game online and uh, hang out with me, it's great. I feel like there's a lack of uh, perspective, you know? Yeah, I don't understand why Strive doesn't show connection quality either, it's bizarre. Speaking of which, in terms of lobbies, not to dump on VF, but it's just very easy because it's such a good example. Have you guys seen this? You can't search for your friend in a lobby in VF. You just have to dig through the lobby thing and try to find someone who's your friend. This game is Virtua Fighter Esports, right? How do you run tournaments for this game? That's not an issue only for this game. But one thing I really want games to have is a lobby code. I don't know if you guys remember me running the FTSE tournament, right? But in FTSEs, the lobby just has a code that you can dump to someone and they paste it and then they click like join and then they click on the code and then whoop, they just instantly go into the thing. Any game that has a lobby code, it's so easy to join sessions and get in and play people. And it makes running online tournaments a breeze. It makes connecting with your friends really easy. It makes getting a large lobby together incredibly easy, right? It's like so useful. You might remember two years ago, I made that video that was like, hey, you should yell at fighting game devs to put in things you like because what the fuck are they doing? One of the things about functionality is that this is something that has existed in the genre or even their own games in the past and then just get neglected in newer versions and you have to wonder why. Think about a MOBA or a Battle Royale or something else, right? You need a ton of people, right? You need 10 people, you need, you know, 12 people for six on six. You need 99 other people for a BR. In a fighting game, you have the other person. It's just one other person, you and me. We're trying to play a match and it's hard for us to connect to each other, to find each other. Come on, man. <laughs> if that part is difficult, that's such a failure because that's one of the easy, that's one of the biggest, biggest successes of our genre is that it's peer to peer. You just need two people, you connect each other, you play a match. It boggles the mind. Also the bar shit, we gotta, let's be honest chat. This bar shit is made up. Can we quit it with the bars? I don't care if it's a one bar, two bar, three bar, four bar, five bar. They can have 20 bars as far as I'm concerned. Just tell me the ping. Give me the number. I, I'm an adult. I don't need a child's slider to tell me what the, just give me the number. If you play any other video game, when you hit tab to see the scoreboard, it shows your ping. It shouldn't be that complicated. Show me the ping. Have I said my piece on VF? My thought on that is it's free. You should try it. And uh, if the online play is really bad, then you know all the people who said it was really good, you know who they were. So you can remember that their opinions suck. You don't have to be mean to them. You can just like make a mental note. You're telling me that everybody got free copies of the game for promotional purposes might have exaggerated a bit and a free stick. You forget, don't forget about that. And lots of viewership the uh, day the game came out. That's an important aspect too. You're telling me a shrimp fried this rice? A classic. Listen. Super Noon tweeted me on my day off. I'm like watching the Valorant major. I'm watching the finals. My favorite team won the championship, right? And Super Noon adds me and is like, I'm streaming plus R, where you at? I'm like, I gotta go over there and punch you to death. I'm just like, man. And I went into my Discord and was like, I need to roll back in Vassal. Who can I send? And Cody went in there and I K'd his ass. He's my vassal. I just sent him in my steed. I was like, I don't need to go. Understandable. I've been there. Sometimes you get hit by a meaty charge 6P.